Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a video for you talking about Blade Show West 2021. That's right, it happened again. Hooray! Knife shows are coming back, nature is beginning to heal. But anyways, um, th this was a recent show that occurred in Long Beach, California here recently, and I wanted to show off some of the stuff I picked up at the show, as well as uh, to get my, my impressions of the show, generally speaking, and uh, yeah, um, but first off, two things. I want to thank my Patreon patrons for making the entire channel as well as this trip possible. They are gems of human beings, and I appreciate them every damn day. The other thing is I want to apologize for my voice. I know most of the internet says I should start every video that way, but at the moment you're probably hearing my voice is uh, a little bit uh, strained. I am an allergic human and I am super allergic to something going on, so I don't know about it. Anyways, uh, so, you know, that's what we got going on here. But anyways, Blade Show West, held up in Long Beach, um, actually a very, very nice venue. Uh, you know, talking about some of the good things, the venue was great. It was the Long Beach Convention Center. It had a, a nice room overall. Um, the, the, the hotel attached to it was great. They had sort of a pit experience going on, which was really nice. And honestly, I was very happy with the turnout of it, right? I mean, I'm sure they probably wanted a little bit more, but at the same time, dude, I'm, I was scared it was going to be an absolute ghost town. We had great custom makers. We had great um, production makers. Um, and we had a lot of people there just wandering around. It was an absolute joy to meet some of you all uh, there at the show. And, uh, you know, yeah, I was very, very happy with the turnout. The other thing is, being a slightly smaller show, it felt a little bit more, uh, frankly, uh, uh, tractable than some of the other Blade shows. The big one in Atlanta, I can run around for three solid days and still feel like I've not seen what I need to see, whereas this gave a much slower pace. It was much nicer for me to be able to just walk around, talk to people, spend a little time, and really give people the, 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 the do, if you will, and learn what I needed to learn. So, um, you know, in a lot of ways, that was that was really nice. And of course, there was some great gear. Um, There's stuff that I picked up on the table, but there were some other kinds of uh, makers who I, I'd like to, you know, spend some time featuring. I'm going to think about other ways to do that in the future here. But it really impressed me, as well as some folks that I already knew were pretty impressive. But anyways, so it was a very nice time overall. I also got to meet some great friends there. I got to meet some people who I never met in person, but have known for, through the channel for years absolute freaking joy. Um, and so overall, it was a really positive experience. I appreciated it very, very much. And, you know, honestly, uh, especially given that it was just a little drive up the coast there for me, uh, it, it was a pretty enjoyable show. Um, on the bad side, you know, I gotta say, there was there was a lot of pretense, and by that I mean, for instance, they had metal detectors out front, which was hilarious, right? Because it's like, dude, it's a knife show. Yes, people are bringing in 15 knives. And I think the security guards were a little confused about what the heck they were doing anyways, um, but that, that was a little bit frustrating. I'm sure there was some insurance company or another nipping at their toes on that one, but I hope that's something they're able to uh, skip in the future because, dude, it's a knife show. If you're walking through a metal detector and you don't have a knife, it's a little suspicious, right? So that was a little bit weird and not something I'm in love with. Um, the other thing on the bad side that I really didn't appreciate is the lack of some of the major brands. There were major brands there. Hogue was actually there with a great showing. Got to have a great conversation with some of the Hogue people and just, I was blown away with some of the stuff they're showing off. They are really on the rise. That is a company to watch and I'm very, very happy to see them continuing to really push some boundaries. So I appreciate very much uh, seeing Hogue there. Um, we had other companies we knives, Ray Art knives were there, uh, and then a bunch of uh, smaller companies as well, but missing were big ones, like for instance, Spyderco didn't have a table there for some reason, Benchmade didn't have a table there, um, none of the, uh, like CRKT didn't have a table there, Gerber was completely missing, like guys, come on, this is Blade Show, this is an area where you're going to engage with your fans, I don't really appreciate the fact that they're skipping what is actually a very, very large show, um, and so I was a little bit disappointed to see a lack of some of those big production places, as well as relatively few retailers. Although there were some there, like the Knife Joker, who's based out of, I believe, Bishop, California. Uh, they were there, had a table, and a number of other folks wandering around. But it, it was a little disappointing to see the, the, the big production houses sitting this one out. Like, guys... Come on, this is this is the show. But anyways, um, so that wasn't great. And then you know, finally, I, I it was a little short. Now that's a silly thing to say, right? It was a Friday and Saturday show. But at another level, um, you know, I, I especially as these shows start to grow bigger and bigger, a little bit more time can be very helpful, especially if you're a person like myself who has a lot to do at a show like that. A little bit of extra time would have been helpful. But on the whole, honestly, for what it was, I was very afraid that this was going to turn out to be a kind of. Eh, show, but it turned out to be quite nice. I very much appreciate it, and I'm very glad I, uh, I went, and I'm very grateful to the Blade organizers for doing a really nice job of it, right? 
But anyways, let's go on to what a lot of you, I think, are dialed in for, which is my Blade Show haul, right? What are the pieces that I've picked up? And of course, I want to be, uh, I got to be honest with you. Some of these guys I actually did purchase. Some of these guys uh, were actually gifted to me, and some of the guys were loaned to me for review or, uh, you know, presented to me for review, as is the normal approach. And so uh, let's go on ahead and just sort of jump in in no particular order. Um, right here, we have an AD-15. Now, this is a Cold Steel Knives AD-15, uh, not the Demco version, but what's different about this guy is this scale here. This is wearing a brown micarta scale. Um, th this scale was actually um, made by a buddy of mine. Uh, it was actually a local guy, but we happened to bump into each other at the show. Uh, his Instagram is slashy tones. I don't know, like, tones as in, you know, uh, 440A. That's probably not a thing. You can tell I'm an acoustics guy. Anyway, slashy tones, uh, not like the library. Uh, and he had a, I'm just going to keep giving you uh, explanations for his name. But anyways, I'm um, a great guy, and uh, he wanted me to check this guy out. And you know what? It's pretty cool, right? And it really does class up the 8015 from Cold Steel a little bit compared to the stock, you know, oh my God, texture G10. So I appreciated that very much. It's a neat little piece. And uh, yeah, so that was really cool. Thank you very much for that. Um, Next up right here is a Wii knife. This was presented to me for review by Wii Knives. For many manufacturers, it's cheaper to just hand me something at a show than to ship it to me, so I think that happened a fair bit here. Um, This is the Wii Knives Smooth Sentinel, uh, which has kind of a, a Michael Jackson slash X-Men thing, like you've been hit by you. Anyways, Eddie, are you okay? Uh, so, this is the Smooth Sentinel. This is a 20 CV line, uh, uh, line lock, frame lock. I'm not 100% sure what the heck this lock is, um, because it's kind of linery, it's kind of framey, Either way, um, it's it's a locking knife, uh, and it's got actually a lot to like about it, right? It's a very lightweight piece. Um, it is a carbon fiber on the top here, as you can no doubt tell. It's uh, very nice, very slicey, comes down to a thin edge, good size overall. This just struck me as a really nice all-around for everyday carry, and uh, just under three inches of blade length. Yeah, so this was definitely one that it was like walking around the table like this jumped out at me. This is an impressive piece. And actually, also from Wii, um, is this little guy right here. I actually got to speak with the designer of this guy. This is the uh, Wii Knives uh, Mini Synergy. Um, this is designed by Jim O. Young, and um, it's a weird piece, right? It's cool uh, in that this is actually a very old design. It was one of the first production integral pocket knives, and uh, but, you know, dating back to the 90s. Uh, but at the same time, now Wii has the power to make it. They've made the full-size one for years. Um, um, which never really jumped out at me, but handling the Mini, I think, puts this in a range that I think is a lot more sort of practical. There were still a couple of things. Uh, he, he knows about the jimping on the back here I don't care for, but at the same time, um, it's a cool little piece, right? And uh, so I appreciated very much the chance to kind of get a look at it, give this a carry, and see whether this integral here is, uh, you know, going to be worth doing uh, in the longer term. Also kind of a weird clip, right? You don't see this kind of a clip approach very often. So looking forward to putting this guy in the pocket, giving it a little bit of time. So anyways, that's the mini synergy from Wii. This is the uh, Wichita by a very strange company called Golfers. Um, it's like a mix of golfers and gophers, uh, which uh, historically, I gather, don't mix well, but I guess it works out here. And this particular one is the Wichita. Uh, and so the, uh, the, the the Wichita here is a knife that is designed for golfers, very specifically. You can tell that in a couple of ways. I mean, hey, it's a knife, so it got that part right. Um, it has a, a, a cap lifter on the back there because I gather drinking and golfing. I am not a particularly golfy person. I can do okay at a driving range, but, uh, and mini golf, I can, I can tear it up, but you know, the regular thing, not my style. You have a divot tool here so that you can go and kind of push in the, uh, the, the soil around after you uh, make a divot on the green there. And then also this little part in the front here, check this out. If I press down here, this is a ball marker. So you can set that down where the ball was uh, if, if it's in somebody else's way or something. So that's kind of a nice little feature, right? It's held in there magnetically. They sell a variety of these things. So if you don't feel like the angry gopher is uh, channeling your inner self, then by God, you can find something else that is. So it's kind of a cool piece, right? It is unique. And that's the biggest thing. Like, is it something I'm going to recommend for every day, everybody for their everyday carry? No, probably not. Is this a cool thing to carry while you're out on the links? Yeah, I bet it would be. And so it's unique. It's different. It's something that you're not seeing every damn day. And, you know, that much I very, very much appreciate. And so I definitely wanted to check one of these little guys out. Um, next up on the list is this guy. This guy I purchased. Um, this is the uh, Leong Ma Designs L1. 
This is a very cool knife. Um, it is an integral pocket knife. So uh, same thing with the Synergy here. The back handle is, well, the handle itself is made of one chunk of titanium. In this case, it also has some carbon fiber overlays on it. But take a look at that lanyard hole. That's kind of nice, isn't it? But anyways, um, you've got a nice clip on it here. It is a, uh, it, it just, it works very, very well. Um, you have an S90V blade that is very, very thin behind the edge. Um, it is just a nice shape in the hand here. You can choke up a little bit, although I think that depends on having a little bit smaller in the way of fingers. And by the way, if you're looking at the, this, turns out that an oven can be broken and the top little uh, coil can still turn on. Whoops. Can tell what I've been dealing with lately. Anyways, I digress. Um, so the, uh, the, the the L1 here turned out to be a really nice piece, and it was one of those like, okay, yeah, I should pick this up for the channel. Thanks to my Patreon patrons who make it possible. So um, this is definitely something I'm looking forward to giving some carry to. This is actually a prototype by Olone Knives. Uh, come here, Olone. Uh, da, 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 da. I could have sworn I had a little bag with their name on it. O H L O N E, O loan. Um. Anyways, uh, this is a, a cool little piece they had on the table, and I I don't know if it's gonna end up getting made, but I I said, wow, this is a really nice piece. And the the the, the, the Derek, the, the the guy there, tried to give one to me at the time. I'm like, no, 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 I can't take a prototype off a small maker. That seems uh, kind of sus. And the, later on, he apparently arranged he arranged to have it handed to me in a place where he wasn't around, so I couldn't hunt him down. So, anyways, I I now own this prototype. It's a cool little knife right? Um, and I, I actually do hope it makes it to market at some point in time, because uh, it is, it's a slip joint, by the way, but it's a, it's a pretty well done one with a really nice back spring to it, a nice form factor, a couple of tweaks that always could be made, but it's a neat piece. And so, yeah, that one ended up accidentally in my pocket. Um, this guy right here is the CJRB, I think it's the Mini Centros. I'm not 100% sure uh, what the final name of this is going to be, but this is another prototype. But I was at the Artisan booth, um, because CJRB and Artisan are the same thing, and I handled this this guy, and it blew me away. This is a mini version of the CJRB Centros, as the name Mini Centros might imply. Hold on, let me grab my Centros Centros. I believe that would just be the Centros, maybe the Mega Centros at this point. Come here, Centros. I'm looking at, ah, there it is. Hiding in the back there. This is the full-size Centros, and this is the Mini. And honestly, the Mini is a great little piece, so I'm very much hoping this guy makes it to production. I have been advocating for the artisan to bring this out there because, dude, this is cool, right? It's got a really nice little action. It's very tuned in well. It's got a nice blade. It's it's just, especially as somebody who likes smaller knives, I think this would really be a great choice. And so I'm very much hoping we're going to see more of this in the future. Um, but at the very least, they want to be to have the prototype to give some feedback down the road. So that's cool. Um, next up, let's talk tactile. Um, this right here is a tactile turn pen done in a finish very similar to like the Olamic and Tropic finish. Um, it is very very pretty. Um, and it's just a cool little piece overall, right? I'm a big fan of tactile turn uh, as a pen maker and uh this is just a cool little thing they just handed it to me said nick we, you know this turned out great we figured you'd take a look so you know what th th that's a beautiful thing but actually more impressively coming to me from them is this little guy right here i've talked before about the tactile turn rock wall um the video has not been up on my channel yet that's because i've been waiting for availability and waiting for them to be regularly purchasable this is the rock wall with a flipper tab hanging off the back here it's a great knife, absolutely stellar. But then they uh, they, they, they showed me this guy. This is the same knife, basically, except using a thumb stud. It's an ambidextrous thumb stud with access on either side. I don't know that I've got the skill with my flicking to be able to do that reliably. I haven't practiced it, but you can definitely do it. Um, but this is a thumb stud version of the rock wall. This is great. This is a cool little knife. I am a big, big fan of it. I think thumb studs should see a renaissance here. The other cool thing about it, this particular prototype is in Magna Cut. Magna Cut is the hot new steel. It was designed by Laren Thomas of Knife Steel Nerds. Um, and uh, apparently, according to a lot of makers, it's really, really good. I haven't had a chance to check any of it out yet, but now I do. And so I'm looking forward to that. I'm going to spend some time with this guy. Apparently, some of the early models might not be in the Magna Cut. They're still dialing things in for it. Um, but at the same time, this is a really cool knife. And it's really cool to see them really pushing forward and going to some interesting new steels in the process. Tactile is a very, very impressive company to me right now because they're just dropping really nice pieces. The other really nice piece that came across my table recently is this guy. This is the uh, Bayer, Bexer, Bayer. Uh, Bechar, I'm not 100% sure. The Joy Bechar, I'm, it, it's something. B-E-X-A-R. This is a slip joint pocket knife. 
This wasn't, by the way, from the show, although they had them at the show. Look at how damn thin this thing is. Size comparison, Spydeco Delica. This thing is really, really terribly thin. I love it. And I've actually even left the lanyard on it because I've been carrying it in a little slip like this. It's been great. I am really impressed with this little knife. Um, I, oh, oh boy, is this thing good. I guess it's got a, a decent back spring. I think they could goose it up a little bit more even, but oh boy, did they do a nice job here. And so I've been blown away with tactile lately. Um, they are really, really exciting stuff. I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of that. And actually one other thing that they're doing that's a little different is this guy right here. This is an American made kitchen knife in 14C28N, um, which is quite nice actually. Um, I haven't uh, spent much time with it down in the kitchen yet. Did a couple of token cuts, but it's real thin behind the edge. 14 C's a great steel. And you know what? Uh, it fits well in the hand. Ergonomically, it's good to go. They're doing these on Kickstarter right now. So I'm a little, yeah, but the thing is, we know the tactile guys are around and they will probably deliver because otherwise <laughs> they'll never hear the end of it. But nonetheless, it's interesting to see them doing this and branching out into, uh, you know, another good source of American made kitchen knives that are made worth a damn. So I was definitely excited to see that. And I was very excited to see this guy right here. This is a cool knife and I really look forward to spending some more time with it. Next up here is this guy right here. This is the Monterey Bay uh, Knives Sea Otter. This is an American-made Monterey Bay knife. Um, this is a, a brand new release from them. Um, this guy here is not a final production version. I'm not going to give you too many thoughts about it because the reason it's on my table is to take a look at it and give them some feedback and then send it back so they can make the tweaks for the future versions. But it is really cool to see Monterey Bay knives doing some stuff made in the USA in these kind of classic Laconico designs. Um, it's running on washes. It's got a great action. I'm, there's a lot to love about this knife right here. But like I said, um, you know, I'm really excited to see the future of this model, uh, as well as potentially other models uh, made here in the U.S. This little coin was made by a gem of a patron. Uh, you know who you are. Um, he made a couple of these for the people at the show, uh, which is amazing. Uh, little Hands Long Beach, yes. And then finally, I decided, you know what, I've got a lot of kind of more crazy stuff at the show, you know, like, okay. But I wanted to get something that was very practical, something that was very straightforward, something that I think, you know, would be a nice everyday companion. So I, I was wandering around the show, and I, I saw something that called to me, and that, of course, was this guy right here. This is the Wee Knives Damas uh, Damasteel Escaton. So, uh, a few weeks back, I, uh, maybe more than that at this point, what is time? Uh, anyways, I was on Metal Complex's podcast, and um, I mentioned on there that one of the knives that I felt like got away from me was the Wee Knives Escaton. And the Escaton is an absolutely insane knife. If you haven't seen my review of it, um, well, it's still pretty apparent that it's absolutely insane. It is an Elijah Isham design, and uh, it is completely over the top, and it is intricate in ways that most things aren't. It is made of two pieces. The original was meant to have carbon fiber there. I actually like the blue titanium a little bit more. But anyways, um, it is an absolutely nuts knife. It is half integral because this part is just one chunk. These parts are two chunks. It is a completely nuts blade. And I, so I said on his podcast, God, I really wish I had gotten one of the nicer Escatons when they were available. And then I walked over to the Wii booth and they had three of them there. They had one of these guys in Damasteel and Carbon Fiber, which was great. A little Fifty Shades of Grey for my taste. They had a full dress model, which I didn't buy... I was very close to doing it, but a buddy of mine did, and I may end up buying it off of him at some point in time. And um, then they had this guy. And that was a, okay, I haven't seen one of these in many years. The price was right for me. You know what? I'm doing it. Screw it. So I bought a freaking dressy escaton. Um, this is not a piece for daily carry. This is a piece of art. And I think that this is a piece that we will look back in 10 or 15 years at the knife world and say... That was different. That was unique. And that was a time and a place in the world. So as a curator of gear, he says pretentiously, um, I feel like this is a cool piece to have in the collection. You know, I've got like the Arrakis, which is in many ways the uh, slightly more EDC friendly version of the Escaton. But at the same time, this, this is its own thing. So this is purely for the joy of it. This is just a knife that I find amazing. And uh, I, I say knife, by the way, with some, and I sold my original one because honestly, it wasn't a very very good practical daily carry piece, but as a piece of art and as a modern sculpture, oh my God, is this thing cool? 
And like I said, um, seeing it in the damn steel, seeing it done in the blue tie, like, yes, 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 yes. I look at this and I smile. And at the end of the day, I think that's a big part of what the collecting is about. So anyways, that is my Blade Show West Hall. There's a lot of really good stuff there. I'm a very, very lucky man. And um, yeah, I hope this has been interesting to you, that you learned some things about the show. I hope the show continues there. And frankly, I hope it continues at that venue. That was great. A really nice convention center, really nice. I, and I hope that the, the, the big players decide to freaking show up for it next time, guys. Just saying. But anyways, um, it was a joy, right? Um, there there were a lot of a lot of great people. It was a fun, of course. And I guess that's always the best part of these is getting to hang out with people, to see people. Uh, therapeutic edge, women carry knives. Um, uh, the, 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 oh come on, lots of people. Bearded gear, Zach stuff. Uh, and then just to see all of the other makers, all the other folks. Um, the the, the pro tech people are always amazing. Um, the, the, there was just a lot of joy there. So um, that's what I picked up there, uh, including. Some incredibly practical pieces, as well as some things that are a little bit more exotic. And uh, there we go. So keep an eye out for review for those things over the next few months. And uh, I hope you found this interesting. Have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.